let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little occult chat. Truthfully, I don't even... <clears throat> I don't even really know what to talk about, you know, this morning. Um, but I guess I do in a way. I never come on here without a topic to talk about. Um, the spiritual message, well, there are going to be several spiritual messages, but the main one of today is stop being controlled by other people. Stop being controlled by other people and their thoughts about you. Stop being controlled by social media influencers because however they got their influence, it's not going to work for you. You have to be in your own spirit. Even if there's mediocrity within you, even if you are, you know, on a level of mediocrity, there is a uniqueness in being mediocre. But the problem is that people that are mediocre, they try to be something that they're not. And that oftentimes leads to disaster. You, you understand what I'm saying? So be in your own energy, be in your own spirit, be in your own frequency. And just be you. Like Judy Garland said, everybody else is taken. So be you. Just be yourself. And learn to maneuver in your own energy and understand your own energy. And that is really my goal for 2023, to understand my spirit even more without being influenced by others. And, and that's not to, that's not to say that you can't have people along the way of your, on your journey to give you um, a lift or to give you um, some advice because people do need people. People do need people. You know, that is why sometimes we go to, and I always recommend reputable, you go to reputable, you know, um, people who are spiritualist or, you know, spiritual counselors, whatever you want to call it. You know, me, myself, I'm more of a spiritual advisor. I don't do um, the actual work for people. You know, I can make recommendations on what people can do for themselves, you know, and that's really rare, far and few in between. I don't really deal with the public too much, you know, because my gift is special and I don't think that everyone is ready for my type. So I'm not really... I don't make myself readily available to a lot of people, you know, because I'm a rare gem and that's how you have to look at yourself. It's not about having hundreds and thousands of followers and subscribers. That's that is mediocrity in and of itself. That is layman and practical in and of itself, because that is what everyone wants. But everything you want is not always necessarily what you need. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, what are you going to do when none of those things fulfill you anymore? When having this the, the, the thousands of subscribers no longer fulfill you? What are you going to do when money no longer fulfills you? Because it, it, it will happen. Of course you strive for success, but never neglect your spirit and never allow other people's lives to influence and control you on how you should be. And that's simply where I'm at. You know, I'm in a place now where I don't want anyone's life or what they're doing in their life to influence me. So, Let's have a little chat about what's going on in the world. <laughs> so Barbara Walters passed away, as we all know. She was a pioneer in television for women. And Miss Walters does deserve her respect, you know, because she was a pioneer in television for women across the board. And if it were not for Barbara Walters, there would have been no Oprah Winfrey. There would have been no Diane Sawyer. There would have been no Whoopi Goldberg on The View. 
There would have been no Wendy Williams. You, you understand what I'm saying? Barbara Walters, she opened up the door for a lot of women. And that's because, you know, she has been replicated so many times, you know, and we'll get into that maybe. Um, but what I, you know, there's one thing that I find very interesting. Number one, I think personally, Barbara Walters died a long time ago. That's just my personal opinion. But one thing that I do have a question about is, where is her daughter? Barbara Walters has a daughter named Jacqueline Dina Goober. And she has not been seen in the public eye in over, at least over 20 years, I know. She has not been seen in at least over 20 years. I believe the last time we saw her was when she and her mother, adoptive mother, Barbara Walters, they appeared together on the Oprah Winfrey show back in 2002. That was over 20 some years ago. That was 21 years ago. So where is Jacqueline Dina Goober? They mentioned her on The View, but it was very quick. And it was very, very like hot potato, hot potato. You know, you remember that game, hot potato, cold potato, where you passed around an object like it was a potato. And if the potato was hot, you hurried up. Remember that? It was like that. It was almost as if they didn't want to mention her. So what's really going on in that world? It, it, that's what I want to know. Is Jacqueline Dina Goober even still alive? Because why hasn't she made any statement about her mother's passing? I mean, even Christina Crawford, when Joan Crawford died back in the 70s before I was born, even when Joan Crawford died, Christina Crawford came out and made a statement and that was her adoptive mother as well. So what's really going on is my question. Then we have Andrew Tate. He was arrested. Didn't I tell y'all that Andrew Tate wasn't who he pretended to be? Now, I get it. Some people are going to say that, you know, well, he was exposing things and saying things and they came after him. Yeah, I, I get that. I get all of the, you know, the undertones of what may have been and what could have been or what could be. I get that. But I'm a firm knower. Let me say this. I am a firm knower that when there is smoke, there is usually fire. He was accused of human trafficking and he was accused of rape. And this is the this is not the first time <clears throat> that he was accused of something similar to this. Last year or the, or the year before, he was accused of holding a woman against her will or something like that. Allegedly, let me say that. So these are not the first time that these types of allegations were, were made against Andrew Tate. And what's more disturbing, let's say for the sake of argument, but what's more disturbing is the, the people that follow him and how he's been propped up as one of the most powerful men in the world. That is very, very dangerous. That is very dangerous and it's dangerous because he's really not the real representation for masculinity. That is not, it, it, that is not alpha heterosexual masculinity. And I'm gay and I even know what alpha heterosexual masculinity is. And that's not it.
alpha heterosexual masculinity, number one, is not bitch assness. That's number one. You don't have anything to prove. You don't have anything to prove. When a man is masculine and has what people would call big dick energy, he don't have anything to prove. He does not have to be a social influencer. He can be an auto mechanic. He could be an engineer. He's taking care of his woman. He's taking care of his children. He is not abusive. He ain't no henpeck man. But he's not abusive and he is attentive to the needs of his family. He's protecting his family. Heterosexual masculine men don't do shit like this. And that is the problem. That is the problem. The lines are getting confused with a lot of these young men. It's okay to talk about men issues. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But when you prop yourself up as a rep representation for something that you really don't represent, that is a problem. It's a it's it's um it's along the same line as Gay men who pretend to be masculine tops. You perpetrate frauds. You say, oh, I'm a masculine man. I'm a top. And you know, I'm into, you know, <clears throat> feminine men and bottoms. But then come to find out you taking more dick than bottoms. And then to add insult to injury, you're going home to a woman every night. Taking dick just like the woman. You get what I'm saying? So it's along, it's along those same lines, that deception. The deception of masculinity. Masculinity is intelligent. It's intellect. Masculinity does not do the things that Andrew Tate has been accused of. Masculinity does not do the things that the so-called manosphere does. Masculinity does not put their hands on women. They're not abusive to women physically. That's not what the manosphere does. Now, you're not going to tell me what the fuck to say out of my mouth. But when you are a man and you're putting your hands on women, see, I put my hands on other men. I have a problem putting my hands on other men. With women, I walk away. I may say a couple of curse words, cuss they fucking ass out, but I walk away. <clears throat> but with men, I have an issue with my hands. I recently had an issue not that long ago, y'all. Because see, I'm not one of those gay men that's going to do a lot of talking. Because I wasn't raised to do a lot of talking and conflict. I was raised that if a motherfucker saying shit out their mouth that you don't like, you choke that motherfucking nigga up. Or you put your you you knock that nigga's teeth out. See, that was how I was raised. Okay? That is how I was raised. When it comes to other men. That is how you're supposed to be. You are not supposed to be abusive to your female counterparts. You are not supposed to take advantage of women in that way. You're not supposed to do that. And then you want to call yourself a masculine man. Forcing women and these were the allegations against him, forcing women to be in porn, threatening them to be in porn. These were the allegations that were that were against Andrew Tate. And I don't give a fuck who's a fan of his or not. He very, he's very charismatic. He says the right things because there are things that he says that even 
resonate with me. As a man, take the sexual orientation out of it. I get the need for masculinity, but he is not the ambassador for this message. And why would he be online arguing with a 19-year-old girl? Why is a 36, 37-year-old man online arguing with a 19-year-old girl? He was arguing with Greta Thunberg. And I'm not a Greta Thunberg fan. I don't have nothing against the young lady. But what I'm saying is, is that why is a 36 or 37 year old old ass fucking man sitting online arguing, arguing with someone who's practically a child? Why are you doing that? Those are not the actions of a masculine, a real masculine heterosexual male, we're going, to, we're going to stop abusing and misusing these terms for the sake of putting spells on people and blind. See, this is where the occult comes in because they are blinding people <clears throat> with a false concept of what masculinity and heterosexual men are. Because back in the motherfucking day, back in the day, real heterosexual men they didn't do shit like this. And then on top of that, people keep saying that he's black. Where is he black at? I don't see no black in Andrew Tate. I see a corny ass white boy. I see a corny ass white boy. Now his father may be black, allegedly. I'm gonna say allegedly, but I see a corny ass white boy. <clears throat> and this is not me attacking him because I don't like him per se, which I don't because I don't know him, but it's pointing out the behavior, the behavioral patterns and how that creates the culture. It's creating a culture of metrosexual slash heterosexual men. And people are not seeing that. You have to have a spiritual eye to see it. They're not creating a culture of heterosexual men. They're creating a culture of emotional men who don't know how to communicate with women. That is what they're creating. That is what he's creating. And the women that, 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 that say, he said that there are a lot of women that come up to him on the street and say, I wish I had a man like you. Um, I wish men were more like you. I challenge those women to live in the same house with that man for a week and then come back and tell me, would you be saying the same exact thing? I challenge you to do that. Andrew Tate is a caricature. He's not authentic. He's along, he is along the same lines as Kevin Samuels and other men that are part of that so that were part of that so-called manosphere. He's part of, they're all made up caricatures to distract you from what's really going on. And what's really going on is that they are creating a society of bitch ass motherfucking niggas who sit up and abuse women verbally and physically. Now, let me say this. Yeah, I didn't cuss women out. Yeah, I have, but I had a good reason to do that. I had a good reason to do that. And I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want out of my mouth. But I'm not in relationships with women. And overall, overall, I have respect for women when they have respect for themselves. See, I don't have a deep rooted hatred for women. I don't. I'm not jealous of women. Like some gay men or even men may be. They don't have to be gay. There are a lot of men that are jealous of women. I'm not one of them. If I cuss a woman out, it's because she doing something to me that's detrimental to me. And I will cuss a person out. But these men are cussing women out and attacking women because they're women. If you come for me, I'm gonna come for you. I don't care what, what your gender is. And not only are they verbally attacking women, they are physically attacking women as well. And like I said, I have a problem putting my hands on men. Like I said, I just had an incident not that long ago where I had to really calm myself down because I choked the nigga up. I was getting ready to whoop his motherfucking ass. 
And he begged me to take my hands off of him. He said he had never felt that type of force. And I only used one hand to go around his neck. And he said he had never felt that type of force around his neck because you don't know the, the spirits and the legions that are behind me. I told you, motherfuckers, I'm like Damien from The Omen. And I'm not bragging. Not bragging. But that's because a lot of these men have not had men do to them what I did to this particular dude. And me and him, we're okay now. We, we had a disagreement. He said something out of his mouth to me that I didn't fucking like. And I snapped. And I have to work on that. Because he's a free, he is a friend. And I didn't mean, I really didn't want to do that. But sometimes niggas say shit out their mouth. And see, by me being a man, there are things that I can do to another man. He didn't put his hands back on me either because the nigga ain't fucking crazy. You know that. Of course, he said, you know, I didn't put my hands on you because of my love for you and all that. No, 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 no. You didn't put your hands on me because you know if you did, you would lose. Of course, he thinks he can whoop me, but he can't. You would lose. I'm gonna let him think that, but you would lose. You can't whoop me. Can't whoop me. Maybe a woman could whoop me, but can't no man whoop my ass, okay? Can't no other nigga whoop my motherfucking ass. Maybe another woman, maybe a woman can, but can't no man whoop my ass, okay? Can't no man whoop my motherfucking ass. See, I put my hands on men. Whenever, Even when I've had verbal disagreements with women, it never crossed my mind to put my hands on them. That never crosses my mind when it comes to women. But when it comes to men, I think of all types of diabolical fucked up shit to do to them. I'm serious. I don't know what it is, but I'm not gonna let no motherfucking nigga talk no fucking shit to me. But I really don't wanna go around putting my hands on people because you know you can go to jail for that. And he threatened me. He said, if you don't take your hands off me, I'm going to call the police and have you arrested. I said, okay. So I said, okay. Okay. And this guy's a big, tough guy. This is a big, big muscle arms. This is a big, tough guy that I did this to. Big, tough guy. Big arms and everything. He's not muscular, but he's big. He's a big guy. But so am I. See, I'm gay and I exude more masculinity than a lot of these so-called heterosexual men who think like Andrew Tate. And the guy that I collared up, he was a heterosexual dude, by the way. We're cool, but he said some shit out of his mouth that he shouldn't have said. Well, let's just say he's straight, allegedly. <laughs> I'll say he's straight, allegedly. But I don't play that motherfucking shit. But they are creating a culture of bitch-ass motherfucking men. That's what this manosphere is all about. A lot of these men, a lot of you black men that follow that shit, you don't realize that what they're doing is they're really putting a spell on you and they're sucking your masculinity out of you because they don't want you to be a masculine man for real, for real. Because they want to subdue you. So they're distracting you with telling you what they believe a masculine man is. When at one time that was left up to the fathers, the grandfathers, and the uncles. That was a private community cultural thing. Because manhood was represented in different cultures in different ways. Different cultures had different ways where they initiated boys into manhood. And now we have Andrew Tate, who does not exude or exhibit any forms of fucking manhood, in my opinion. He does not lead any forms of manhood. And most of these men are fucking single. They're single. It's no way that Andrew Tate is married. It's no way he's married. And then he recently admitted that he went from being an atheist to now being a practicing Islam. 
Believe me, that was by design because they're all in the same cult. They're all in the same Hollywood cult, social media cult, political cult. They're all in the same motherfucking cult. Recently, let me say this on a side note. That young man, DeMar Hamlin, that plays for the Buffalo, um, for the New York, for the Buffaloes, for the Buffaloes football team, that hit in that chest area where he was hit at, that caused him to go into cardiac arrest, that was done intentionally. See, when you understand different aspects of the occult, you know that they can, that people can hit you in certain ways. They can touch you in certain ways to cause your heart to stop and to send you into cardiac arrest. But people are not ready to hear that. They're not ready to hear this type of information. They think that everything is as you see it and it's not. So my question is, and I hope he makes a re full recovery. But my question is, who are they trying to pull? Who are they trying to, re are they trying to replace him with someone else? Whose energy, they want to remove his energy and put someone else in that place. And who is that? You just got to think. That is why I say you can't let other people think for you. You have to think for yourself and be, and we're, we're up under this controlled system where we have other people thinking for us. They hit, he took a direct hit to the chest. And even some of the experts from what I've researched are saying that this is very rare. When they start talking about it's very rare that this happens, then that lets you know that this was an occult attack or a spiritual attack on that young man for occult and ritualistic purposes. And it happens a lot to black men because black men are not protected anymore because they're too busy over there in the manosphere. They're not protected anymore. They're not spiritually protected anymore. I don't give a fuck if men, you, you, heterosexual men, sometimes, I, I, I agree, sometimes y'all get a bad rap. Sometimes, you know, good heterosexual men, you get a bad rap. I, I, I understand that. And I can admit that. Okay? But the problem is, is that the good heterosexual men, you all remain silent when the bad ones do the shit that they do. You don't say anything. And you're conditioned through spell work and mind control not to say anything. See, I'm a loud my motherfucking gay dude, and that's why I get into it a lot of times with um <clears throat> with dudes, because if I feel a certain way, like the, the very reason that me and my, my someone I got into it with, let me just say that. <laughs> the very reason me and this person got into it was because. I asked him, what is wrong with you? Why, why you? why are you acting like you got an attitude about something? Like, what's wrong with you? <clears throat> like, what's wrong with you? What, what, what the fuck? I mean, you know, like, what's wrong with you? But with heterosexual men or straight men, what I've noticed is, is that they're always talking about gay men that were emotional, but can't nobody say nothing to y'all. All I said to I said, oh, what the fuck wrong with you? Like, nigga, you, you mad about something? And then it went from me saying that to him started to to him attacking me personally. I didn't attack him personally, but when he started attacking me personally, that is when my deities came out or demons and they attacked him. See, you got to be careful what you say out of your mouth. Because see, all gay men are not docile and effeminate. I may have feminine qualities, but I'm not effeminate. And all of us are not going to sit up and let you say whatever you want to say to us. You feel what I'm saying?
And he listens to Andrew Tate. He was a Kevin Samuels fan too. So the point that I'm making is that a lot of these men, they're being bamboozled by what they think masculinity is. Masculinity does not hurt the people that they love. True masculine energy, true big dick energy don't, does not hurt the women that they love or the people that they love. They protect them. They don't victimize them. That's not what masculine, real heterosexual men do. And masculine, real heterosexual men are comfortable in their sexual orientation. Doesn't mean that they approve of homosexuality. You don't have to approve of homosexuality if that's not what you're into. But it simply means that you can respect another person's way of life without you approving of it or participating in it. Because there are a lot of people that don't really get down with homosexuality. I get that. I get it. No problem with you. But when you start disrespecting people and start harassing people and doing all that type of shit because they gay, then that's where the problem comes in. See, this is why I don't really like arguing with people on YouTube, because the last time I had a big beef with somebody in YouTube, I showed up at that motherfucker's house, child. I found out where he lived at and showed up at his house. And I can't, and I can't do that again because you can get hurt that way. You know? But it's the level of crazy that is in my mind, you know, I'm going to want to find out where this person lives at. And trust me, I can do it for myself. I ain't doing it for nobody else, but I can do it. And I don't care where you are in this motherfucking country. I will find you. So that is why I don't do the back and forth because I'm a person. I want to see you face to face and I want to see you talk that shit to me in my face. See, whatever I say to anybody online or anybody, whatever, I can say it to their face. I don't do bitch-ass motherfucking shit. Like a lot of these so-called fake black occultists and shit like that, they, they're not really about that spiritual life. Because sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. It is what it is. Sometimes you just gotta do what the fuck you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Andrew Tate is really who he pretends to be. He's not who he pretends to be. And, I, and I'm not going to say I think, I know he's not. Otherwise, how can you say that you have respect for women and women love you, but you're involved in trafficking women? You're involved allegedly, let me say allegedly, you're allegedly involved in trafficking women and you're allegedly involved in holding women hostage and raping them allegedly, because rape was one of the charges as well. That is why I say you cannot allow people to control how you think and see them. You have to see past the glamour. There have been people that I liked on YouTube and the occult community for many years, but once I started seeing who they really were, see, like I told you all before, when people realize that you are a true seer like me, and you can see it ain't always about seeing spirits. Yeah, I can see spirits. But it's also about seeing people for who they really are, seeing their true agendas. And this is why I rarely get caught up. Because once I find out a motherfucker's true agenda, I don't care if you're a male or female. Once I find out your true agenda and I realize it ain't, it ain't good for me, I wash my hands up. And I'm going about my fucking business. I'm going about my business. Because I'm not controlled by those who wish to control. All of these social media influencers and all of these other motherfuckers, they want to control you. I don't, I don't want to control people. I don't want a lot of followers. Because I don't want people looking up to me and having expectations of me because I'm going to let you down. I'm still a work in progress. I am going to disappoint you and let you down. Just like a lot of people thought that Kevin Samuels was going to go on and on forever, but he did not. He's human. Same thing with Andrew Tate. I'm sure there are a lot of people that are let down. 
I'm sure it's a lot of people that are let down by his actions. Some of them don't believe it. They're going to say, oh, he was set up. When there's smoke, there's fire. When there's smoke, there's fire. I don't care what he allegedly exposed about the Illuminati or whatever the case may be. Trust me, the same, the same people he's exposing are the same people that he's in alliance with in some way, shape or form. You don't get to be at those levels without being controlled by someone within that twisted organization. Now, I know people are saying that, well, you know, well, he said in an interview, well, you know, they don't want anyone with my type of power to not be up under their control. You're already up under their control. You think we don't know that? That's the trick right there to trick you into believing that he's not up under their control. For all we know, and I'm going to play devil's advocate, for all we know, this entire motherfucking scenario of him being arrested in Romania of all places, for all we know, this could be a, a whole fucking production that may not even be fucking real or staged. Sorry to my, to my little brother, AR, because I know he told me I need to stop thinking that everything is staged, but I'm sorry. Maybe it was staged. Because it does seem kind of fake. Just like the whole death of Barbara Walters. I think Barbara Walters been dead. I think Barbara Walters has been dead. And maybe that's why we're not hearing from her daughter. Because everything seems to be a, a stage production. His back and forth with Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, whatever her name is. And then he gets arrested right after that. And some people were even saying that Greta, I said, these people are crazy. Some people were even saying that Greta Thunberg had set him up or that whole exchange between he and Greta Thunberg was a setup. It could have been. But what if everything, is, what if all of this shit is staged? What if none of it is real? There's a strong possibility that none of this bullshit with Andrew Tate is real. There are people who are even saying that he is um, really Anton LaVey, who was the founder of the Church of Satan back in the 1960s, and Anton LaVey died in 1997, allegedly. But then on the grapevine, like I told you all before, on the in the underworld, where I'm from, there's chitter chatter that Andrew, I'm sorry, that um, I was going to call him Andrew Tate. There's some chitter chatter that um, or some some secret chat or some uh, download chat that um, Anton LaVey faked his death. See, we just don't know what they're really doing in that world. We don't really know what they're doing in that world. We really don't. We don't really, because we are the dumb public, we don't understand what's really going on in that world. The more and more I educate myself on that world and what they're doing in that world, and the reason I do that is because they dictate culture. And when you dictate culture, you could have influence on masses of people. And if women are wondering why men are so crazy right now, look at who's influencing the culture. It is metrosexual men, um, weirdo so-called straight men, <laughs> gay men, who all have an agenda. Just like Tyler Perry. Why is he involved with, with Meghan and Harry? And no, I did not watch that ridiculous uh, Netflix series documentary, Meghan and Harry. I ain't watched that shit. I'm not being bamboozled by that bullshit. No disrespect to Meghan Markle, but that's not my, <clears throat> that is not my problem. And black women, it shouldn't be your problem either. Why are so many black women so many, let me just say this. 
So many horrible things happen to black women right here on YouTube and in this country. And we are supposed to ignore that and put all of our focus, look at, put all of our focus on Meghan Markle and Harry, two people who get money, wealth, and protection from Tyler Perry and other people as well. This is the spell work that I'm talking about. The manipulation of the mind. You had, and I never really spoke about this, but you had Cheryl Underwood mad at Sharon Osbourne because she would not call out Piers Morgan because they were calling Piers Morgan racist. Whether he's racist or not is not the point. My thing is, why does Meghan Markle's needs take precedent over other black women's needs? Because black women right here in this country have fucking needs, but they've distracted us and we're focusing on Meghan and Harry. Harry was born with a silver fucking spoon in his mouth. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. What racism has he experienced? Your grandmother was the goddamn queen. Now, I'm not discounting Meghan Markle's experiences. I'm not discounting that, so don't get it motherfucking misconstrued. But what I am saying is, is that black women, your average black women, even black women who are not so average, are going through things right now and it's not getting the attention that it deserves. And I don't think that black women should give their energy to that because what are you getting out of it? What are you getting out of it? Tyler Perry is not coming to, to give you no protection. Tyler Perry is not coming to give you no money. Because we are controlled by social media influencers. We are controlled by their trauma. We're controlled by it. I just never understood why so many people are so into this Meghan and Harry stuff. And I know some people are going to disagree with me on that, and that's fine. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about that. I'm looking at it from a whole different perspective. Black women have gone through so much in this country alone. She's married to a prince with money. They have protection from Tyler Perry. And yet, while all of this is happening, while all of this is going on, we still don't know who killed Kanika Jenkins. We still don't know what happened to Sandra Bland. We still don't know what happened to Mertrice Richardson. We still don't know what happened to, um, what's that young girl named that was murdered? That, well, I think she was murdered. She may have been sold off into sex slavery. Um, Relisha Rudd here in DC. We still don't know what happened to that young, little, that, that young girl who was only eight, maybe not even that. We still don't know, but we're worried about Meghan and Harry. I'm, I'm just I'm just asking a question. So what the royal family didn't treat her. They didn't treat her good. Has anyone ever thought that that's a whole stage production, too? They're not above that. You think the royal family is above that? They're not above that. They're not above playing these games. Trust me, they got handlers too. Just like Andrew Tate has handlers. Doesn't Andrew Tate look a lot like the royal family members? He talks like them too. He looks a lot like them. 
He looks like he could be related to Prince Charles, actually. Isn't he from, wasn't he born in the UK? Some sources say he was born in the UK. Some sources say he was raised in the UK, but born in the US. And then the other sources say the opposite. So what's the real truth about Andrew Tate? Who is this man for real? Who is he? Where did he come from? All of a sudden he comes out of nowhere and everybody follows him because everybody wants to be controlled and everybody's looking for a motherfucking leader. And then you wonder why your lives are so fucked up. You wonder why you don't have no peace in your motherfucking lives. You wonder why you got to smoke weed every motherfucking day. And I'm not talking to black women. I'm talking to black men. I understand black women. You got to do what you got to do because everything is on you. Everything is on your motherfucking shoulders. That's why black women have heart problems and stuff like that sometimes. Because everything is on them. And this ain't taking up for one gender over the other. I'm looking at the facts. I'm looking at the spell work and the manipulation on both. You had Cheryl Underwood on the talk. She taken up and fighting so hard for Meghan Markle when her life will never be that of a person like Meghan Markle's. Meghan Markle has not even graced them with an interview on the talk. You're sitting up there taking up for this woman and she won't even come on your talk show and even give you a fucking interview. But they fired Sharon Osbourne and I'm not saying she should have been fired, I'm not saying she shouldn't have been, but they fired her. Actually, she shouldn't have been fired if you ask me. And I'm just being honest, that's my opinion. Not because I like her, but it's just the influence that someone has that's not even around. How do we even know if Meghan Markle is a real person? And not just another created caricature. Could Meghan Markle be Princess Diana? Because you know, word on the curb is Princess Diana faked her death. Check that motherfucking T. Word on the curb is Princess Diana faked her death. And then Harry is child i don't even want to get into that dynamic that's some weird shit that's some weird shit and it may or may not be true but i'm an open-minded person because nobody controls how i think no matter how crazy people may think i sound no matter how crazy i may sound i'm going to think things out that is what occultists and spiritualists do we have open minds we're eccentric we think of all possibilities whether they're true or not and the black community has lost that. Black men, you didn't used to be followers like this. Black people didn't used to be followers like this. We used to dictate culture. Now culture is dictated to us. There are, there are black women right now in the United States that are suffering and going through shit. And it doesn't get no motherfucking attention. But we're worried about Meghan Markle and Harry. We're giving them all of our energy and all of our blessings when you can take some of that energy and you can bless yourself, black women. See, they play on the energy of black women and they use Cheryl Underwood to do that with her dumb motherfucking ass. And I like Cheryl Underwood. I really, really do. I adore her, but she was being a dumb ass in that bullshit. Because Meghan Markle don't give a fuck about you. Just like Andrew Tate don't give a fuck about you fucking niggas. Did Meghan Markle send you a card, Cheryl? Did she send you a cake? 
Did she say thank you? No, she didn't. Because it's all game and it's all cap to pull and suck people's motherfucking energy. And to get you up under their ritual and to get you up under their control. This is all antichrist energy. Because antichrist is practical. But when you're Christ, you're spiritual and you go within. See, when Christ went within himself and went into hell, he was going into his ego to battle different demons within himself. And he did not allow the Antichrist at that time to show him all of the governments of the world and all the power and money of the world and glory of the world. He didn't allow that to influence his spiritual journey. And we are allowing these people to control and manipulate our spiritual journey. If the royal family or the monarch or the monarch, however you say it, if they did not want Meghan Markle in that family, she would be dead. She wouldn't be there. Trust me. You saw what they did to Princess Diana if she didn't fake a death. If they didn't want her in that family, she would be gone. You have to think about that. She would have never been in it. But the T is, here's the T. All of them are related. And you can look that up for yourself. Meghan Markle is a distant cousin to those over there in that royal family in the monarch. She's related to them distantly, but she's related to them. They're all related. It's all a process of inbreeding. That is why they're so crazy. Same thing with, with, with Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, her husband. They were related. God save the queen, darling. They were related. Some people say they were cousins. I think they were brother and sister. I think they were brother and sister. Because they're following the same, let's just say the same foundation and the same origin of the Egyptian culture where brothers were marrying sisters. Because remember, Isis and Osiris, they were brother and sister. They were brother and sister, Isis and Osiris. They had many inter incestuous relationships within the Egyptian dynasty within the pantheon of deities. And they follow that foundation. Meghan Markle is related to them. That's why she was allowed in. But see, people don't do their research and they don't understand this. And you're giving your energy to people who don't really deserve it. Like I said, we still don't know who killed Kanika Jenkins. We still don't really know what happened to Sandra Bland. We don't know what happened to Relisha Rudd. But we worried about Piers Morgan being mean to Meghan Markle, Cheryl Underwood. And I know this happened a couple of years ago, but I, I decided to speak on it. We worried about him being mean to Meghan Markle, but she won't even come on your show and give you a motherfucking interview. And all the black women that go through shit and suffer on a daily motherfucking basis and they don't get this type of motherfucking coverage. That is why I call cap and bullshit. And that is why it's important not to be controlled by these antichrist entities. And that's exactly what they are. They are antichrist entities. All of them. Tyler Perry, Meghan Markle, Harry, all of them. Andrew Tate, all of them. Tyler Perry may be talented. I ain't got nothing against looking at his movies. Ha ha ha. Funny laugh every now and then. But I don't worship these people. 
How come Oprah's not giving interviews anymore? Hmm, that's interesting. Oprah Winfrey doesn't give interviews anymore. Very interesting. Mm, maybe not so much. Anyway, this is the occult view. Like it. Love it. I just wanted to come through and just expound upon my thoughts on everything that's going on in the world and within the universe and within the universe and how it affects our universe, you know? But anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you.